Hello, in this video we will be discussing how to calculate the average product and the marginal product. First, how to calculate the average product. The average product, which is the AP, can also be known as the average output. So we may say average product or average output. The average product equals the total product divided by the amount of labor used. So total product or total output, or we can also say quantity divided by level of output. Q, which is quantity, and total product are one and the same. They mean exactly the same thing. So total output, or we may call it total product, or we may call it quantity. The level of that divided by the amount of labor used to produce that amount of quantity. So for this first part here, to get the average product in this first box here, we say the total product in this instance is zero divided by the level of labor is zero. So zero divided by zero, that's undefined. Hence, we represent it with a dash. Next, the total product is four and the level of labor is one. So we have four divided by one. So the average product per worker is equal to four divided by one is four. Next, when the total product is 10 and the level of labor is two. So quantity is 10 divided by the level of labor used is two. 10 divided by two is five. So this means on average, we expect that when we have total output of 10 and the number of labor uses two, we expect each labor to give us output of five. Next, when the total level of output is 13 and the amount of labor uses three, so we say 13 divided by three, that will give us 4.33. So this means the average level of output per worker is 4.33. Next, when the total product is 15 and the level of labor used is 4. So to calculate on average, 15 divided by 4, that is 3.75. And lastly, when the level of quantity is 16 and the amount of labor used is 5, to calculate the average product per worker, that is 16 divided by 5, 16 divided by 5 is 3.2. And we are done with the calculation of the average product, or we may call it the average product of labor or the average output. Next, let's calculate the marginal product or the marginal output per labor used. The marginal output per labor or the marginal product of labor is simply the change in the total output or the total product divided by the change in the labor, which is the same as saying change in quantity divided by change in labor. So how is this calculated? This means to calculate change in quantity, we say the new quantity minus the old quantity divided by the new labor minus the old labor. Starting with this first box, the level of output here is zero. But before zero, we have no quantity before zero. So which means in this case, there is no old quantity and neither do we have old labor. So which means this is the first position that we are. So we can't fill in anything in this first gap here. So we simply put a dash. Next, initially we had a total output of zero, but then our output increased from zero to four when our labor increased from zero to one. So previously we had no labor and then we employed one unit of labor or one worker 
and then we were able to increase our production from nothing to four units. So the increment, which is the marginal product, which means extra product as additional labor is used. To calculate that, we simply just say the new quantity, which is 4, minus the old quantity, which is 0, divided by the new labor, which is 1, minus the old labor, which is 0. Simplifying that, 4 minus 1 is 4, divided by 1 minus 0, that's 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. This means when the level of labor increased from 0 to 1, our total production increased by 4. So when the level of labor increased by 1 unit, the total product or the output produced increased by 4 units. As we mentioned when we were doing the cost concepts, we said marginal is not meant to be on this block. It is meant to be in between. So the 4 is actually supposed to be sitting in between because we are calculating from 0 to 4 and from 0 to 1. But because we are limited by this barrier, we put the 4 in the second row. But do not forget that this 4 represents the increment from this position to this position. Next, now we have 4 outputs. Our output increased to 10 when we increase the number of labor from 1 to 2. So this means now the new level of output or new level of product produced is 10 and the old level is 4 divided by the new labor is 2 minus the old labor is 1. So that's equal to 10 minus 4, that's 6, divided by 2 minus 1, that's 1. So 6 divided by 1 is 6. So this means the additional level of output as a result of one increase in the unit of labor is 6. So we have 6 here. Next, the quantity increases from 10 to 13 when the amount of labor used increases from 2 to 3. So the marginal product in this case will be 13 minus 10 because 13 is the new product or the new amount of output or the new level of output minus 10 which is the old level of output divided by the new level of labor which is 3 minus the old level of labor which is 2. Simplifying, we have 13 minus 10 is 3, divided by 3 minus 2 is 1, which means 3 divided by 1 is 3. So the change in quantity by one change in labor used is 3. Next, the total output increases from 13 to 15 when the amount of labor used increased from 3 to 4. So to calculate this marginal cost, we simply say, 15 minus 13 divided by 4 minus 3 and that will give us 2. So that means the change in output by one change in the amount of labor used is 2. Last, when the total output increases from 15 to 16 and the total unit of labor increases from 4 to 5. So to calculate the additional output by one additional unit of labor, we have 16 minus 15, which is 1, divided by 5 minus 4, which is 1. So we have 1 divided by 1, and that will give us 1. And this completes the calculation of the marginal product of labor. One more thing to take note of is, when we calculate the marginal product, we should be able to tell if the law of diminishing return occurs and at what point does the law of diminishing return set in. In order to be able to tell where the law of diminishing returns set in, first we must make sure that we understand 
the concept of marginal products, we must make sure that we understand how to interpret the numbers that we have on the column of the marginal product. So the first number we have is 4. 4 means that when we look at our initial level of labor, we have 0 worker and then we have 1 worker. So this means when the amount of labor increases by 1, the total output increases by 4, which makes sense because zero worker can only produce zero unit of output. But once we have only one worker, the one worker will produce four. So which means the one worker is giving us an addition of four. But when we introduce another worker, which means we have two workers, the total level of output increased to 10. Initially, when we had one worker, one worker was producing four. But when the new guy comes into the business, our total product increases to 10. That means the new guy is affecting the production by giving us additional 6 units of output, which represents the second marginal product of labor that we have, which is 6. Next, when the third guy comes into the business, the third guy gives us additional 3 units. Why? Because the first worker is giving us 4 units, the second worker is giving us additional 6 units. So that means we have a total of 10 units being produced at the level of 2. But when we have a new worker, that means we have 3 workers. The total unit of output is 13. So if 2 workers are producing a total of 10, and then when they become 3, they are producing a total of 13, that means the new worker is giving us an additional 3 units of output into our production. And the same analysis can be done when we add the fourth worker. The fourth worker is giving us only additional two units because three workers are producing 13. So when we have four workers, we have 15. That means the new worker is giving us only additional of two when we go from 13 to 15. And lastly, when we have a total of five workers, four workers are giving us 15. But when we have five workers, then our production increases to 16. So that means the new additional worker is giving us only one additional unit in the production process. So the law of diminishing returns or the law of diminishing marginal returns sets in at the point where the marginal product of labor starts to decrease. The law of diminishing returns sets in at the point where the marginal product of labor or at the point where the marginal product starts to decrease. So we need to check at what level of labor did we experience diminishing or a decreasing marginal product. So when we had the first worker, marginal product was four. And then we had the second worker, marginal product was six. So from four to six, that is an increase and not a decrease. So no problem here. But when we had the third worker, marginal product decreased from 6 to 3. So previously, the marginal product was increasing, that is from 4 to 6. Then when we had the third worker, the marginal product decreased from 6 to 3. And then when we go next, when we go to the fourth worker next, we can see the marginal product decreased further. And then fifth worker decreased further. So this means the marginal product of labor started decreasing from this point. So at this point, when the marginal product is 3, and which worker is giving us this marginal product of 3? The third worker. So this means the law of diminishing returns sets in when the firm or the business employs the third worker. So the law of diminishing returns sets in at the point where the labor used is three workers or three units. In a separate video, we will discuss in detail the law of diminishing returns and why this problem occurs. Thank you very much for watching this calculation video. If you did enjoy it and it was beneficial, please leave it a like and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in another video. Thank you very much.